Zephyr. Welcome to Mid Pines Golf Club in the Sand Hills of North Carolina, where we are about to do something really, really stupid. We're about to play more than 80 holes of golf in 48 hours. James Colgan and Zephyr Melton here from golf.com. Zephyr, we're about to have a few days, aren't we? Yeah, we are, James. We are right across the street from Pine Needles, where the ladies will play the US Women's Open. It's on a great Donald Ross design. So we're in the Sand Hills. We're going to show you guys a little bit of the best golf in the region, some of the best Donald Ross designs, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Let's rip. 80 holes to go. That's perfect. <laughs> smooth one off the first yeah, smooth tee. one off the first tee. <laughs> I didn't see it. I mean, Mid Pines kind of it reminded me, uh, fittingly, of Pine Needles Gin, where it kind of looks uh, pretty simple from the tee box, but as you get closer to the green, things get a little bit more challenging, and then, you know, the green complexes, he'll change them up a little bit to get some more pinnable locations. You gotta hit good shots, but whenever you do, you're rewarded. There are birdie opportunities out there, but you know it's not gonna be super penal for even you know the 25 handicap in your group. You know, I, I think when you look at golf in this region in general, there's so many great designers and so many great golf courses. What Kyle's done at Mid Pines, and I'm sure what he's done at Pine Needles, is really right. bring out the essence of what the design was supposed to be. You know, the, the intensity and the severity of the bunkers, the uh, breaks in the greens and the undulations, all of those things, you know, you can see it when you're walking around. You can oh. see the ways in which those touches brought back the original design elements as they were meant to be. That close to an 89. God damn. Oh, that was a good one. Good start. Very good start. Mmm, <laughs> that close. The Cradle is one of the best golf courses in the world. And maybe part of the reason for that is that it's not quite a full golf course. You can't go that wrong on it. It's short, it's playable, it's fun. Uh, the vibes are, are incredible when you're out there. And I, I don't think there are many courses in the world that I've played that I've wandered out, you know, barefoot, with three clubs in my bag. That course is so special, it's so fun. And honestly, I don't think a trip to this region is complete without playing it, even if it only takes 45 minutes to play. It's extremely laid back. You've got music blasting the entire time you're out there. We even played it barefoot. I mean, there are not many places there that encourage that kind of laid back atmosphere. But at the same time, it's a legitimate test and you know, it might be a short course, but it's hard. Like you've got to hit good shots. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's one of those places that you could play all day and never get bored of. I mean, after two holes, I knew I was gonna be hooked. It's just an incredible course. It's uh, designed in a way where you know, if you don't hit good shots, it's gonna penalize you, but if you do hit good shots, you're gonna have some really neat birdie opportunities. Uh, there are some beautiful, beautiful vistas out there. I think 13, we can all agree, is one of those great, beautiful holes. Um, and then, you know, that closing stretch as well, 16, 17, nice. and 18 is just awesome. I remember talking with Gil Hans, the designer, about number four, and he said he built the slope so that everything breaks towards the hole, as opposed to on number two, everything breaks away from the hole. And I think you can really see that when you're playing there. You'll hit an approach that goes to the back corner of the green, and then all of a sudden you'll turn around and you'll have 10, 12 feet for birdie, 10, 12 feet for par. Uh, my knees were bowling balls when we were done. I felt awful. It was a long day. It was a lot of walking. I think I had somewhere close to 25,000 steps. It was one of those classic muggy North Carolina days, and I think that took it out of us. I was very tired and worn out, and I knew we were going to need some rest for the next day.
Tobacco Road is casino golf. That's all it is. There's nothing else to say. You either hit the jackpot or you lose all of your money and there's no in between. The undulations, the breaks, the incredibly small greens, all of that is intentionally ridiculous. But the positive side of it is that if you know what you have to do and you can at least trust that there's fairway where it doesn't look like there's fairway or there's green where it doesn't look like there's green, you can find yourself with three feet for birdie, two feet for birdie, and I made a few pretty ridiculous shots that I had no business with birdie looks at that wound up working out in my favor today. It's just the wackiest golf course I've ever played. Um, it's kind of tricked up in these weird ways. You've got tons of blind shots. You've got these greens that are massive, but not necessarily big, if that makes any sense. They're, it felt like there were three greens and one on several of them where you could choose which one to play on any given day. You were driving your cart through the bunker. I would just describe it as like Alice in Wonderland, but a golf course. All right, one more. I'm feeling good right yeah, now. Yeah, I am too. This is not I'm bad. excited for no. Pinehurst number two, you know, it's just one of those championship tests. Uh, but it's also, of course, it's super rewarding to play because it gives you a perspective for just how good the pros are. You've got to hit your spots to be rewarded, but when you do, you get some some pretty cool uh, tales to tell at the 19th hole. There's no place like this. There's nowhere like this. And truly, every time that you come out and you, and you see the slopes, you see the undulations, yeah, it killed me. Yeah, I won't be able to chip for weeks after this. It set me back years, probably. But I had so much fun doing it. It's a true championship test in a way that's appealing to the average golfer. You can see why the USGA has announced so many future men's and women's opens to be hosted out here. It's just one of those courses that could host a championship any day of the week. There's truly nowhere in the world like the Sand Hills region. And I think if anything, this week made me appreciate uh, all the many ways in which this is an incredible area for golf and all the many ways in which my golf game needs to improve before we do another one of these. I feel exhausted. Um, I'm gonna sleep for a long time after this is over. 